A nurse from Tan Tok Seng Hospital who completed her vaccination in February has been diagnosed with COVID-19. As of May 4th, there are 40 cases linked to the Tan Tok Seng cluster. Why are people who have been vaccinated still getting infected with COVID-19? We speak to Dr. Leong Ho Nam, an infectious disease specialist, to find out why. Dr. Leong, how is it that vaccinated individuals still get infected? So if I've been vaccinated and I've been exposed to the virus, the virus will try to overcome the immune system and infect. If the immune system is on the weaker side, they'll infect and depending on the amount of immunity there is, it will have varying severities. If I have a robust immune system with high amount of antibody levels, this will in turn block not only the first infection, but the second and third infections. Hence, you have heard of companies talking about having the third dose. When you have the first dose, you have this amount of antibodies. When the second dose, you have this amount of antibodies. When you have the third dose, you have high whopping amount of antibodies. These antibodies will be like a GPMG, general purpose machine gun, that will tear down all viruses, even if it's mutated. You see, at the end of the day, that we need to depend on the immune system to cope with this new viral adaptation. Eventually, COVID-19 will fade away as yet another common virus is. What you're saying is the vaccination will not prevent us from getting infected? The vaccine, unfortunately, is not 100%. Other vaccines, chickenpox, measles, there are some failure rates. Vaccinations changes from a severe illness to a moderate illness, from a moderate illness to a mild illness, and a mild illness to no illness at all. In fact, if you look at those people who became infected despite vaccination, majority of them do not have any symptoms. They were screened and they were found to be positive. I see. So does the effect of the vaccine stay in our immune system permanently? How I wish the antibodies would last on forever, but it doesn't. Like the natural infections, the antibodies will fade with time. Studies from Professor Wang Ling Fa's lab show that five groups of people are quickly identified after natural infection. 30% of them will have long-lasting antibodies, 30% will have short-lasting antibodies, 30% will have moderately-lasting antibodies. Of the last 10%, some do not mount any antibodies, some may have delayed response antibodies. So using the same data, we would thus assume that 30% after vaccination should have very good long-lasting antibodies. And the rest, unfortunately, may need to have repeated vaccinations. The repeated vaccinations could come as quickly as one year, 18 months, and 24 months. So how long does it take before we can see the effect of the vaccine? Protection kicks in as quickly as 12 to 14 days after the first dose. That's very important because immediately after the first dose, you have protection and when you have your second dose, it's a booster dose, your antibody levels are very, very high, you have great protection. Not just against the primary infection, you're going to protect yourself against severe illness, but very importantly, you may protect yourself. You're very likely to protect yourself against the mutants as well. In that case, does the brand of the vaccine matter? Currently, we have at least five different brands of COVID-19 vaccines. They vary in efficacy. Some very good at 94, 95%, some at 50 to 60%. In fact, if you look at the mutants, different vaccines would respond differently. Certainly, these are all made by different companies and there would in turn be different responses. Different individuals would respond differently to these vaccines as well. Most definitely in terms of allergies. Some people will be more allergic to this than the other and some tolerability of the vaccines may differ. So, if it doesn't prevent us from getting the virus, why should we still get vaccinated? Is 95% vaccine efficacy, is that enough? I'll be very delighted if my son scores 95 marks and above consistently. But if he fails to get more than 95, do I take him out of school? Do I take him out of education? No because even with 93% or 92%, my child is benefiting from education. And indeed, even 92-93% with mutants, the country, yourself, is benefiting from the vaccination. We benefit from a severe illness, 
become a bad moderate illness, a moderate illness become a mild illness, now and this and that. The other way of looking at it is my son instead of getting a bad failure is going to end up with a good pass. Perhaps not excellent, but a good pass is nonetheless great.